animals, acne, homework, supervillains. When you're a teenager, it helps to be invincible. This comic is a request from Matt Lipton, and hopefully I do the justice he wanted with it. Become a patron to make your own suggestions. Warning, massive spoilers for Invincible incoming. You've been warned. On with the show. Invincible number two. We begin in the past when Nolan Grayson finally decides to tell his son where he came from. He's an alien from the planet Viltrum who as a race had become so perfect they could fly and had super strength and speed and all that jazz. They decided as a species to better other species and worlds to their level and would travel and aid those worlds. Yet Earth was so far from the rest of the civilization in just a backwaters place that was not advanced enough to be added to the betterment schedule but Nolan really liked Earth and decided to say screw it and take a shuttle to become Earth's sole protector to help it as best he could. Why is he telling his, I think, eight-year-old son now? Well, because soon he'll reach puberty, and among the many changes in his body, he may start to develop superpowers. Then we cut to the present time, with Mark not being able to sleep, so he goes out flying only to discover that someone is stealing game consoles from Toys Be Wee. Random fact, sign gags and decent knockoff names are probably my favorite just-in-passing jokes. Anyways, Mark flies down and tries to stop him, but he's stronger than Mark thought he was going to be, yet suddenly the teen team comes in and just gets in the way until Mark throws a great right hook and knocks the baddie out. They give their introductions with Robot Rexplode, uh, Duplicate, and Adam Eve, who Mark recognizes though can't place where they've seen each other before, before they all leave. The next day in school, Mark recognizes Adam Eve since they both have the same bio class which is interesting because we see them sitting next to each other in physics later on. And she's actually pretty chill, even asking Mark to tag along since they're following up on the robbery from last night. She takes him to where the dumpsters are kept by the cafeteria so they can change into their hero gear and fly off to the teen team's base. Robot says neat to the added body, and they're going to follow Mahler back to his base of operation to find out what he wanted with all those video game consoles. He's trying to steal. I would have assumed just to resell value of them alone would net some pretty damn good buck, but I'm wrong. We learned the answer following that while Robot Adam Eve and Invincible are on their way to Mahler's location. Well, good news is that Fox News has a new reason to go after gaming consoles. They're being used by mad scientists to create robot armies! Not a good joke, but either way, they bust in and save the day, with Invincible getting an invite to stick around with the teen team. Elsewhere... A teen wakes up at the Twin Pines Mall with a vest attached to his chest. The timer on the front reaches zero, and he explodes. So, two issues in, and we're already seeing Invincible get into a super team. Neat. I do actually mean that neat, because the general premise of this is, here's a teen hero. So the best way to move that in a unique direction would be peppering other superheroes throughout it. It creates a good balance as a means to show that his costume life is a bit different than his home life, and can set up some problems later on, but we'll possibly get to that. As for his father's origins, well again without spoiling later twists, it works very well for a kid to hear about how his superhero dad is actually an alien. And actually, for anyone who's fully read it, it may actually seem a bit too squeaky clean, but hey, that's something for a different issue, eventually. So now that we're at the exploding vest wearing people that started off the first issue, check for the next video to see where all that goes.